Good morning. The Old Testament reading comes from Genesis chapter 2, verses 15 to 17, and then chapter 3, verses 1 to 7. Now that's found on page 2 of the Old Testament in the Pew Bible. The Lord God took the man and put him in the Garden of Eden to till it and keep it. And the Lord God commanded the man, You may freely eat of every tree of the garden, but of the tree of knowledge of good and evil you shall not eat, for in the day that you eat of it you shall die. And now we're over on chapter 3, verses 1 to 7. Now the serpent was more crafty the Lord God had made. He said to the woman, Did God say, You shall not eat from any tree in the garden? The woman said to the serpent, We may eat of the fruit of the trees in the garden, but God said, You shall not eat of the fruit of the tree that is in the middle of the garden, nor shall you touch it, or you shall die. But the serpent said to the woman, You will not die. For God knows that when you eat of it, your eyes will be opened, and you will be like God, knowing good and evil. So when the woman saw that the tree was good for food, and that it was a delight to the eyes, and that the tree was to be desired to make one wise, she took of its fruit and ate. And she also gave some to her husband, who was with her, and he ate. Then the eyes of both were opened, and they knew that they were naked, and they sewed fig leaves together and made loincloths for themselves. The New Testament reading is from Matthew chapter 4, verses 1 to 11, which is on page 3 of the New Testament. Then Jesus was led up by the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted by the devil. He fasted 40 days and 40 nights, and afterwards he was famished. <clears throat> the, tempter came <clears throat> the tempter came and said to him, If you are the Son of God, command these stones to become loaves of bread. But he answered, It is written, one does not live by bread alone, but by every word that comes from the mouth of God. Then the devil took him to the holy city and placed him on the pinnacle of the temple, saying to him, If you are the Son of God, throw yourself down, for it is written, He will command his angels concerning you, and on their hands they will bear you up so that you will not dash your foot against a stone. Jesus said to them, Again, it is written, Do not put the Lord your God to the test. Again, the devil took him to a very high mountain and showed him all the kingdoms of the world and their splendor. And he said to him, All these I will give you if you will fall down and worship me. Jesus said to him, Away with you, Satan, for it is written, Worship the Lord your God and serve only him. Then the devil left him, and suddenly angels came and waited on him. Finally, the epistle reading comes from 1 John chapter 2, verses 15 to 17, page 239. Do not love the world or the things in the world. The love of the Father is not in those who love the world. For all that is in the world, the desire of the flesh, the desire of the eyes, the pride in riches, comes not from the Father, but from the world. 
and the world and its desire are passing away. But those who do the will of God live forever. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Would you pray with me? Lord God, empty me of me and fill me with you so that the words of my mouth are only yours spoken through me. And Lord, open the ears of the hearers here today that they may hear what it is you are calling on their hearts to take from this message into the world. We pray this in your precious name. Amen. Ash Wednesday marked the beginning of the 40 days of Lent. It is a time when we begin the journey to the cross, a time for reflection and examination of ourselves. It is a time when we hear people who are giving up chocolate or soda, meat, or other tangible items. But I want to challenge us to give up more than chocolate this year. I want to challenge us to give up some deeper things. Over the course of Lent, there will be a sermon series about giving it up. Each week, we will encounter something else that God desires for us to give up in order to grow in our relationship with God. This week, we will be exploring how God desires us to give up control. In the passage from Genesis, we see the problem that occurs when we try to control things ourselves. And in the passage from Matthew, we have Jesus' example on how to give up control to God and not follow the worldly impulses. In Genesis, we witness Adam and Eve disobeying God, thinking that they know better than God. And this obviously led to a disastrous outcome. Think about it. Adam and Eve chose to eat of the tree of knowledge only just after acknowledging that God instructed them not to do so. In that moment, they allowed the serpent, which represents the worldly temptations, to stray away from trusting in God. They fall prey to this worldly temptation of believing that they know better than God does. So often we fall prey to that same temptation, an unconscious belief that we know better than God. Consider this. How many times have we witnessed or experienced ourselves people or ourselves getting into arguments or getting terribly angry over something that others around them think is just trivial. In these moments, we must ask why we think we know better than God. Even more, we must ask ourselves, are we falling prey to the world's ways or are we following God's ways? The world's ways seek power, pride, judgment, and more. God's ways seek peace, love, reconciliation, and justice. In the moments when things are heated and tensions are high, we must examine ourselves and ask, are we thinking we know better than God? In this passage from Genesis, we also see that God gave humans freedom. The freedom to eat of all the trees in the garden, but this freedom is not boundless. It involves trusting in God and not taking all control. Finally, in this passage, we witness that humans were created by God for a purpose. They were created to care for God's creation. Namely, they were created to do God's work in the world. Yet so often, we who were created for God's work in the world let the temptations of the worldly desire to control hinder us from doing God's work. Adam and Eve's perception is that they knew better than God. And this allows, we see this, and it allows us to see the foolishness and learn from it. And yet, how easy it is for us to still fall prey to the temptations of the world that make us think we know better than God. 
It reminds me of one of the joys that came to my mind as I was preparing for this sermon, a joy that I saw when my children were very young. I can remember what happened when each time was their first time in one of those grocery carts that look like a car. The ones that are like to grocery shopping, like electronics are to vacations. I don't know what we ever did without them. But I remember the first time they each had in those carts. And they were so excited to control it. They would put their hands on the wheels and they just felt like, man, I am going to drive this thing. And I would turn as they turned and so on and so forth. But then there was that inevitable moment when they are in that car cart, happily driving along, and suddenly realize the steering wheel doesn't work. <laughs> At least not the way they thought it would. It's like when we fall prey to the misleading worldly ways, only to eventually realize that those ways are not God's ways and they won't get us anywhere. When we believe we are in control, we set ourselves up for falling into the temptations of the world. Jesus knew this, and this is why we witness his way of dealing with the world's temptations in the passage from Matthew. In this story, we are given the example of how to live in trusting God's ways, not the world's. We are given an example of how to give up control. Jesus is tempted with three very worldly desires, power, pride, and possessions. Jesus is first tempted with power. The tempter tells him he has all the power that he can make stones turn into bread. But to really understand the scope of this temptation means grasping what it's like to go 40 days without food. Let me tell you, the longest I've ever fasted was three days, and at the end of those three days, I think I would have done just about anything for a bite of bread. So I can't even imagine 40 days. And yet Jesus responds, reminds us that we are to remain focused on God's ways. Jesus is then tempted with pride. And again, he refrains from falling into this worldly temptation by recalling God's ways, by recalling God's words in scripture. Last, Jesus' temptation tempted with possessions. And with that, Jesus demands Satan to leave. He has had enough, and he will only follow God's ways. What we witness in this passage is that there is one control we actually should possess, and it's not to think we know better than God. The control Jesus possessed was self-control. Self-control that seeks to follow God's ways and not the world's ways. The world's ways that lead to destruction and harm. You see, self-control is focused on your inward spiritual self, whereas the desire to con control things in this world is outwardly focused on power over those things. Jesus examples for us what true control comes. True control comes when we have self control that follows God's ways. My favorite author of all time is C.S. Lewis, and in his book, The Screwtape Letters, he tells of the tale of a tempter in training. This tempter is told by his mentor to train his patient to love the things of the world and reject God. The mentor instructs the tempter, whose name is Wormwood, to direct his patient to pray for tangible worldly desires, to act oversensitively until even his own mother gets on his nerves, and to turn his gaze away from God towards himself. He is to create subtle conflicts whenever this man prays for courage. The captivating part of this story is that the tempter's goal is to create a generation of people who are defined by selfishness, insincerity, pettiness, and pride, fear, and need to control things of this world. The point is that the temptations come to us in moments when we look at others and feel insecure. When we make judgments about others, 
when we allow our tempter to distract us from trusting in God's ways. We will fall prey to those temptations when we lose self-control. Think about a time when you lost self-control. Were you acting in ways that are in line with God's ways? Likely you'll say no. Because Jesus teaches God's ways mean we give up the worldly ways of power, pride, and possessions over and above caring for creation like we were called to do. Most often when we try to control something, it's because we want it a certain way. We want it our way. It means we believe we know better than someone else and should have the power to enforce what we know is right. We believe we can't be wrong, which is pride. We want more and more to be ours, which is the temptation of possession. In these times, we need to stop and ask ourselves, do I think I know better than God? And are my actions following God's ways or the world's? Let us remember that God created us for the purpose of caring for creation by following God's ways. Over these 40 days of Lent, may we examine the control we must give up in order to have self-control in the way that God desires for us. Let us remember that in having self-control, we become the living example of God's ways, the ways that combat the harmful ways of the world, the ways that point to Christ's saving grace, the ways that point to the cross. For the sake of the gospel, and the sake of the world.